How's it going, guys? I'm Mike Dwyer from The Bunker Recordings and BetterMixes.com, and today I want to talk to you about the secret to get huge, impactful choruses. So what's the secret? It actually has nothing to do with your chorus, but everything to do with your verse, and it's to make your verse smaller. To me, one of the ingredients to a great mix is contrast. If everything sounds the same from start to finish, then chances are it's going to be a really boring sounding mix. And the song itself and the arrangement of the song have a huge part to do with this translating in the mix. But I like to highlight the song's contrast to make an even bigger impact to the listener. And if the arrangement isn't great and doesn't have contrast, there's still a lot we can do as mixers to improve the situation. So let's take a look at some examples of how we can do this. So today we're going to be looking at a song called Something to Take the Edge Off by Sounds and Scenarios. And they did a really great job with the arrangement of this song. But like I said, there's still a lot we can do as mixers to really highlight that. So let's take a listen from the second half of this verse going into the first chorus here. And then we'll analyze a few of the things I did to make that chorus really impactful. So yeah, when that chorus hits, it's big. So like I said, a lot of that's just the arrangement. The drums are on the hi-hat in the verse and then go to the crashes in the chorus. Guitars are palm muted in the verse and go to open in the chorus. Let's see what we did in the mix stage to get that impact. So first, let's look at our drums here. I've got one specific move going on that's really helping us here. And that's that I ducked my room mic here in the verse and then cranked it back up in the chorus. So let's just solo the room mic so you can hear that. And now let's hear that with all the drum mics. So yeah, it's just making the drums bigger, airier, more exciting at the chorus. Now, if we go down to our bass, we have a similar move going on here. So I have two bass tracks. One of them's cleaner and one of them's more distorted. Let me show you the difference real quick. So what I did here was I lowered the distorted track pretty significantly, about three decibels in the verse, and then bumped it back up in the chorus. So let's take a quick listen to that. So you can hear when the chorus hits, it just gets more aggressive, more gnarly, more nasty, and more exciting. Now if we look at our rhythm guitars, we're doing some moves here that are making a pretty big difference. So the first thing we have going on with our guitars is this EQ here. So this is rolling off everything below 160 and everything above about 5k. So let's just hear it with and without that real quick. So with it on, it sounds exactly how I'd expect it to sound. Just a little bit thinner, a little bit darker, a little bit smaller. So then we have this EQ automated so that it's bypassing once the chorus hits. Let's take a listen to the difference that's making. So now as soon as the chorus hits, we're getting the full frequency spectrum of our guitars and they sound way bigger and way more massive. Then the other thing we're doing is a little bit of pan automation. So in the choruses, I have my guitars completely wide, 100% left and right. But then in this verse here, I brought them in just a little bit to about 80% on each side. It's wide enough in the verses that it still sounds like your classic wide pan rhythm guitars, but it just leaves that little bit of extra room to get extra wide for the chorus. Another way to potentially do this is to have your guitars 100% left and right, but then automate on a stereo imager in just the choruses, just mixed in a tiny, tiny little bit. I personally prefer this method with the panning, because sometimes you can get some funky side effects with stereo imagers, but be sure to experiment with both and see what works for you. Let's listen one more time going into that chorus, and just listen for the guitars just getting a little bit wider and a little bit bigger from the EQ and the pan moves. Now we're doing something on our lead guitar as well. So on this lead guitar, we have a send going to this ping pong delay in Echo Boy, but we're only having that send turn on at the chorus. So again, this is kind of doing something similar to our pan move up here. Being that this is a stereo ping pong delay, our verse lead is gonna sound much more centered and then it's gonna get nice and wide at the chorus. Let's check that out.
And then we even have something going on with the vocals here. This isn't something I would do in most mixes. Since we've got this kind of call and response vocal going here, it kind of lends itself well to this effect. So on the response vocal, I have an EQ move kind of similar to our rhythm guitar EQ, doing sort of a telephone effect here, rolling off below 350 and above 4K with a 1K boost in the middle. So like I said, this was partly just to connect these two vocal parts, but it also worked well because it made the last line before the chorus sound smaller. So when the chorus vocal hits, it sounds extra exciting. Let's check that out. Feelings are fading. You're just not worth it. While you sit at home thinking that. And then the final thing I've got for you today is maybe the most simple technique, but also one of the most effective. I'm literally just turning down my master fader by about a decibel in the verse. So the whole mix is getting about a decibel louder when the chorus hits. Real quick, let's check out the difference that makes. Here's without that move. And now with. So even with it off, it still made a pretty big impact of the chorus, but that one extra move just added so much more punch and excitement. So I hope you can see from this that making your choruses bigger isn't always about adding more, but sometimes it's about taking things away. Do you have any other methods that you use to create more contrast in your mixes? If so, let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe. And head on over to bettermixes.com to grab a free copy of my Ultimate EQ Cheat Sheet.